All right. Hello and welcome to the Admin Bar, the community that helps you streamline your process, sharpen your skills, and demand higher paying projects. Today is April 2nd of 2019, and this is episode 23 titled How to Design High Converting Portfolio Websites with Laura Elizabeth. My name is Kyle Van Dusen from Ogle Web Design just outside of Fort Worth, Texas. And with me, as always, is my co-host, Matt Siebert from Matthew Siebert Design. What's going on, Matt? Oh, not much. Um, do want to mention that this is going to be a, a fairly vis- uh, visual uh, show. So if anybody's listening on the, uh, the podcast, I would highly recommend hopping on YouTube, our website, or our group, and, uh, and taking a look at the, uh, the visual side of this as well. Yes, might not work so handy on a podcast, but that's okay. So definitely come check it out. Go to theadminbar.com and you will find all of this reposted there uh, for your viewing pleasure. So as I said, today we are joined by Laura Elizabeth once again. Hello and good morning, Laura. How are you today? Hello, I'm good, thank you. Just had a microphone meltdown and uh, moved into a new office a few days ago. So I had to grab all the empty boxes and all the trash (laughs) and just push it that way. Right. Um, So... I have a decent-ish background. So. We, we moved not that long ago, and I cleared out this space right here, and that's about it. Uh, yeah. And the rest of the house was a mess for a while. But uh, yeah, I feel your pain for sure. So for, uh, for everybody joining us today, Laura, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit of background about yourself and why you're here today talking about designing high-converting portfolio websites? Yeah, so um, I, I'm predominantly a designer. Um, I was a designer for the last, I don't know, 10 years or something like that. Um, And over the last few years, I decided instead of doing, well, as well as doing consulting work for clients, um, I was going to teach design to people because I was getting a lot of people want to work with me and saying, um, you know, I just don't have the budget right now. I'm I'm a small startup or I'm a developer with a side project. um, And I really want my thing to look good because I want it to make money. Um, but I don't know how, and I can't yet afford to hire a designer until I start making some money from this. So I decided to start teaching design and I love it. I've been doing it for a good few years now. Um, and yeah, that's, that's pretty much what I'm doing now. I, I also have a product. Um, some of you might remember me cause I've come on this show. It was quite recently. I think it feels recent. Yeah. Maybe a month and a half ago or so. Yeah. Talking about client portal, my other project, um, and we had a lot of people in the comments, I think we mentioned this course, um, say that they were you know, interested in learning more about design. So we figured let's do something and yeah, get teaching. No doubt. All right. Well, uh, Laura does have a course, as she just mentioned, that just opened up yesterday. And I think it runs through Sunday at midnight at some uh, some time zone. So get it before then. Uh, you can go to theadminbar.com forward slash Laura to go straight to the page and check it all out. And she is going to take us through uh, take us through her presentation here. Me and Matt are going to stick around and butt in when we need to. But other than that, let's just get the show on the road. Awesome. Sounds good. Um, So I've already introduced myself. Um, Oh, I think I've gone past some slides already. Cool. So that's me. I'm Laura. Um, I teach design. Um, And yeah, like we said, I'm going to talk about designing a high converting portfolio website. And really what I mean by that is a portfolio website that's going to get you qualified, targeted uh, clients who are going to pay you what you want to be paid. Um, But I'm really going to focus on this word, the design, because Um, I know, like I was just saying, a lot of people aren't really at the stage where hiring a designer makes sense for them. So yes, you want a really good strategy behind your website, but you also want to make it look good. So I'm going to try and go over both today. So the strategy and a process that you can use to design, and I promise you, it really does work. (laughs) Um, You need a little bit of perseverance, but it does work. Um, So yeah, that's what I'm going to talk about today. So yeah, in the, it's going to be about 45 minutes or so, give or take, depending on, you know, how much we chat and stuff like that. Um, like I said, strategy, design, and then where do you go from here? How do you debug your design? Um, but a few things I want to mention is that this is obviously Facebook Lives, so it's automatically going to be recorded. I usually, when I do this, <clears throat> I send out an email with a link to the recording at the end, but you'll already have that recording because it's already there. Um But what I'll also do is I'll make sure you have the slides available because I've put a ton of links and stuff in the slides and I don't want you to feel like you have to be like 
frantically trying to jot things down and take notes. Um, so you will have the slides afterwards. And when we post this on the website, I'll include all those in the in the notes. Okay, awesome, perfect. Um, and the second thing is, um, if you have any questions, just ask. Um, we're going to try and keep this conversational so it's not just me sort of blurting information at you. So if you have any questions, just write in the comments and ask, and I will answer them either at the end or as we go through. Um, and finally, if you can try to stay until the end, because I'm going to give someone a free place in my course, um, which I'm really excited about. I absolutely love doing this because um, it's just so much fun. I am I eligible? <laughs> I mean, you know, you could... I mean, I'll stay till the end. Yeah, I'm, you can have the course. You're, you're my friend. You're good. <laughs> I'm going to give it to someone else, though. So. Fair. It. <laughs> um, okay, so when you think of a portfolio website, um, a lot of people think of something like this um, or something like this or maybe this or this or this or this or this. Do you see a theme here, by the way? I like the high yeah. I'm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of hellos. You're trying to on. speak directly to the person, but it it comes off kind of strange. Yeah, it's just re it's just a really common way for people to have portfolio websites, um, and I I don't want to say that this is a bad thing, um, but because a lot of people, a lot of these people are very successful, right? And the websites look beautiful. But the problem with having a portfolio website that looks and sounds the same as everyone else's is if you're not careful, it can turn you into a bit of a commodity. Um, and so what will happen is clients might be looking for, say, a designer or someone, and they'll look for, they'll get maybe five portfolio websites up. And if they all kind of have the same feel, like a lot of those websites I just showed you, really the main differentiator becomes your price. Um, and I'm sure not many people want their main differentiator to be their price because then you're going to get those emails, which we've all had. I've had a ton of them. Oh, I went with someone else because they were cheaper. And that's the worst uh, feeling in the world. Um, you don't want people to just be, think you're not worth the money. Yeah. And um, I don't want to be the cheapest option either. Exactly. Yeah. So it doesn't work for anyone. <laughs> so, um, I want to talk about some best practices that I've been thinking about for portfolio websites. So I've seen a lot of them um, and I've had my own. I've made a ton of mistakes on mine. Um, I've probably uh, haven't done all of these things back when I first started freelancing. Um, and so I just want to go through some of these and feel free to jump in if you think of any more. This is just me brain dumping some of the things that I think work on portfolio websites. Um, so I'm going to go through all of them just briefly. But then I'm going to actually get some portfolio websites up to show you this in action, because I think that's going to be a little bit more useful. Um, so the first point that I want to make is probably the most important. Um, a lot of the websites that you just saw were very eye focused. So it was, hey, I'm Laura and I'm a UI designer and I like long walks in the rain and I like puppies and all this kind of thing. And that's not really all that useful to your clients. So you really want it to be focused on your client. So how I can help you, what is your problem that you're having? Um, so that's the first one. I'm not gonna spend too long on these because there's quite a lot to get through and I think the examples are gonna be more useful. So just bear that in mind. Um, the second one is a good portfolio website has a ton of social proof. So if you can get as many testimonials as you can, um, that's gonna be one of the best things that sets yourself apart. Um, when I first started freelancing, the way I got testimonials was actually just doing work for like ridiculously cheap, which I'm not saying is the best way to do it, but it got me some really good testimonials. So it kind of, it kind of got me going when I was first starting out. Um, That's a form of payment for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you might not want it to be a hundred percent of your payment, but you know. Yeah. And I had a full-time job at the time as well. So I didn't, I, I didn't need the money and I know a lot of people aren't in that situation, um, but to me, a testimonial was worth more than the money at that point. Um, right. And it proved to be true because as soon as I had testimonials, I got other people um, who trusted that I was going to be able to do what I say I'm going to do. Yeah. Um, and if, you know, I want to add to that and say that, like, you know, if, um, if you had a good experience with a client, then they probably had a good experience with you. And if you just reach out after the project's finished and say, hey, 
if you could leave a review on my uh, my Google business page or wherever you uh, you prefer it, most of the time they'll do it and they'll do it happily. You yeah, just have to exactly. ask. Yeah, and you have to build it into your process as well. So make sure that there is a part of your process that is primed for testimonials. Um, I usually send them like a worksheet or something at the end and um, talk about how, you know, ask questions like, you know, where where are you at? Where were you before you started? Where are you now? Mm -hmm. um, what do you, do you need anything moving forward? Um, this is really good for getting future projects. Um, and just try to ask questions that can sort of be framed in a testimonial. And then afterwards say, hey, do you mind if I use some of your feedback as a testimonial on my website? Um, yeah, that's a that's a great idea. And I would also say that, um, you know, when when you do request a, a review, try to point them or, you know, if, if you're not using a, a worksheet, and you're going to be pulling stuff like try to pull something or try to uh, to guide your clients to leave a review that that's more about what you did for them, rather than how it was working for you. Because if you just have a bunch of you know, reviews that say, oh, hey, Laura was a great person and fun to work with. Like, again, that doesn't say anything to your potential clients. Yeah, exactly. Fun to work with doesn't necessarily correlate to got good results. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, okay, so the other thing, this is one actually I haven't seen on a portfolio website yet is video. Um, but I wanted to put it on because I do a lot of work on landing pages too. Um, and I think video often can work really well. Some people love video, some people hate it. Um, but I would love to see portfolio websites with a little bit of video on there. Um, just you talking, you know, it humanizes you. Hey, I'm a real person. You can talk about your process and they can sort of get to know you a little bit. Um, not something I've seen, but I would class it as a best practice um, just because I have an inkling it would work really well. Um, the next thing is personal story. So this is the thing that people tend to put right at the top, um, what we were looking at earlier. But I think I think that's absolutely fine to include. Just include it further down. You don't want the first thing they see is to is to think that you're just me, me, me. They obviously want to know about you, but not just yet. They want to know if you can help them before they want to get to know you. Um, the next thing is overcoming any objections. Um, now, a really common objection that a client might have is I've worked with a web designer, a web developer, a marketer before, and I didn't get the results I was hoping for, or I was dissatisfied, or I felt like it cost too much money or something. If you can overcome things like that on your website, in your copy, um, that's going to really help you. Uh, pain dream fix. This is a copywriting formula. And if I'm going through this too fast, uh, don't worry, because it's going to make much more sense when I show you the examples. Um, but Pain Dream Fix is a copywriting formula that I use all the time. And it starts with what is the pain that the client's experiencing? Where do they want to be? And what is the fix for that? Um, so a really good example that I heard um, is really simplifying it. But say, for example, a pain could be um, I'm outside and it's raining and I'm wet. And the dream would be that I am dry and warm. And the fix might be an umbrella or going inside or something like that. Um, so that's, I don't know if that makes sense. But no, that's, that's perfect. Yeah. Okay, cool. Really simplistic view of what that means. Um, next thing is to include your picture. And a lot of people do this, but a lot of people, especially developers, don't. Um, and I would really encourage you to include your picture and your real picture, not like a cartoon one, um, if possible. Because, again, it humanizes you. You're a real person. Um, I, I can speak to that for sure. I put my picture on my website because I got that advice uh, and I was very hesitant to do it. Um, but I've had several customers comment on that's why they called me because they felt like they already kind of knew me. Uh, and I definitely saw an uptick in business from doing that. So I put it everywhere now um, too much probably, but yeah, yeah I, I definitely think that's a great idea. That's awesome. I did, I did the same thing. I put it everywhere. My issue is my picture is like really old. Um, it was, really long time ago that I, I made it and I need a new one because I'm aging and uh, <laughs> I, I don't still uh, look like that. But what it's a good bad tip you can never find a camera anymore, you know? Yeah, I know. I, well, it's just, I, it's so sucky having to take those headshots. I hate doing it and everyone <laughs> hates doing it, I think, um, except if you're a model or something. Um, but like a really me. good tip that yeah. um, I have is if you... The great thing is iPhones and stuff have really good cameras now. Put it in portrait mode. They're amazing. 
um, go outside to a park or something with nice green background, natural light. Um, and what I did is I, I had my friend who was taking pictures of me and they were all coming out horrible. And I looked just stupid and I hated it. Um, and then I was getting really frustrated and I thought, okay, I'm done. I'm, I'm going to go. Let's just do one more. And I was like, I'm going to try something. So I'm going to turn around. I turned around and faced away from the camera. And then I just turned and smiled. And then I got the perfect picture and it looked candid, it looked natural and it was awesome. Um, so if you're not very good at taking pictures of yourself, try that because it worked for me. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. No, it didn't work. Matt. <laughs> I think you got to have hair for that trick. I don't think so. It's like, if you've seen that Friends episode um, where Chandler's trying to take a picture, do you watch Friends? Man, it's been a long time. Very long. Uh, well, it doesn't actually work for him, but they tell him, look down, look down, look up and smile, and you'll get the candid thing. Friends reference everywhere. Awesome. Uh, okay. So <laughs> <laughs> the next one is you need a clear call to action. This one's pretty simple. What is the one thing you want your client to do once they've read your page? Um, and finally, you want to show your expertise. Um, so you want to show that you're qualified to do this work. Um, OK, so I'm going to go into some examples now and show you a few of what I think are really good websites. Um, the first is this one by my friend Moitza. Um, she's a Facebook ads expert, and she runs Super Spicy Media. And I really like this website because it's got two things um, in here, which are I don't know if you might be able to tell from that list I just gave you. One is she's got her picture, and the other is she's got a you focused title. So she helps seven figure plus businesses maximize profits with Facebook ads. Yeah, she's narrowing down to her exact customer right away. Exactly. Yes. So if you're not this, you just close the tab. And she doesn't really care if you close the tab because, you know, she's not looking for you anyway. Right. Um, and so, yeah, I really like how, how targeted this is. It's not saying, hey, I'm Moitza and I, I love puppies. It's just saying, this is, this is what I do. Um, and she's got some really nice copy going on. So she says, let's be honest. When was the last time you were really satisfied with your Facebook advertising results? Um, and this is speaking to a pain that a lot of people have. So they try Facebook advertising and they don't get results. This is a painful thing. Um, She's saying times have changed. What used to work now doesn't work anymore. This is what you need. Um, she'll talk about this is what she'll do. This is actually the fix. So she's using a pain fix dream thing instead of pain dream fix, but it doesn't matter. We will help you define your goals and develop a multi-level strategy around them. This is the fix. And then this is the dream. You will never have to worry about Facebook ads ever again. Instead, you'll be able to focus on growing your business without neglecting the marketing side of it. Um, and I Uh oh, looks like uh, Laura's video feed has cut out here for a moment. Should we all just pause as well? Are you seeing the same thing, um, Matt? Yeah, yeah. Oh, she's back. There you go. You're back. Maybe. For a second. Paused again. Frozen. Hang on with us. I can hear you now. Maybe. Yeah, okay. it looks like you're coming back now. We're all back. Might be my internet. It's been super buggy lately. Um, so let's hope that's our glitch for the mission. Awesome. You're good to go now. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So she then goes and talks about who she is. So this is her personal story. She lost a job at an advertising agency. You know, this is getting to know her a bit. Um, and she now works with multi-million dollar businesses from all. Um, she's an author. She's a Facebook ads expert and an international speaker. It's showing that she knows what she's talking about. She's got credentials. And we go down here, we've got, you know, more um, companies that she's worked with and she's got these testimonials, um, one after the other, lots of testimonials, which I like. She then has a little ad for her book. This is, I guess, kind of the downsell, um, but it also shows her expertise because she's like, hey, I don't just do this. I wrote a book on it. Um, and that makes her seem like she really knows what she's talking about. She also teaches what she does for her clients. So again, just proving that she knows what she's doing. Um, and then at the end, she has a, a clear call to action. Now, this is the only part of this website that I'm not sure about. Um, I think, so what she wants you to do is she wants you to sign up for her free Facebook ads email calls. My, my issue with this is that she's targeting seven figure businesses and she's targeting busy founders. Um, I don't think these people are gonna want to sign up for an email course. No, they want somebody to do it for them. 
Yeah, I agree. I think if I were her, I would change this to fill in this very short form and I'm going to give you a call. And then maybe the downsell could be the email course. But at least she has one clear call to action, which is what you want it to do. Um, so that's one website. Um, another website is Simon McCade, who's a freelancer. Um, and he he's a, he's a designer. Um, but instead of just saying, hey, I'm a designer, he's again, he's speaking to people saying, are you building an app without design expertise? And he's saying that he helps tech startups design better digital products without hiring a full-time designer. Clear call to action there. Um, so he's he's got the sort of pain dream fix thing going on. So he's saying, how will you create a product that people can actually use? Um, he's talking about how customers might be suffering because you know they've built something that just isn't a good experience and doesn't look good. Um, he talks about um, this is actually good. This is him overcoming some objections. So what I imagine is a common objection that he gets is, I'm the founder, I'm just going to do design. Design isn't that important. I'll just fudge it together. Um, or I am a or I have a de developer and they can just do the design because developers can design, right? Um, and he's saying that this isn't necessarily true because um, founders don't necessarily have the time to design and developers don't necessarily have the expertise to design. Obviously, the ones that go through my course do but a lot don't. <laughs> Double threat. Yeah. Um, so, you know, he's kind of going on to say how much is bad UX costing your business? It's leading to an increase in churn. You know, I'm getting really stressed now because I'm thinking, oh gosh, I really need good design now. And now he's starting to think about the dream. So what if you could rely on an expert to guide you? Um, and now he's getting into it. What about someone who's done it before? Hey, look, I have worked for these companies before. And then if so, I can help you. So now he goes into the, hi, I'm Simon McCade. I help tech startups design better digital products, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I really like this because he's catching your interest as you go down before really introducing himself. So he knows that the first thing that you want to do is figure out if he can solve your problem. And the second thing is he wants to introduce himself. Whereas most people get that the other way around. They want to introduce themselves and then maybe but not even always talk about any problem. Um, again, I'm not gonna go through all of this. He's got, how do I do it? He's got testimonials, social proof. He's got some of his work and he has one nice next step. So schedule a free consultation. So great website overall. It is, it looks so good. I, I'm thinking about stealing it for my own. <laughs> Sorry, just to call back. It. There's to... nothing wrong with stealing someone's website and just changing the name, right? Right, I think Didn't it's you know perfectly that? okay. Yeah, Definitely. I mean, keep all the copy intact. Just, just yeah. uh, fi search and replace. That's that's all you, you know, need. You can even keep the testimonials. It doesn't matter. No one cares. No one cares. <laughs> um, should we do a disclaimer that I'm not actually advertising? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> my website was stolen, and somebody took. If if you didn't see my post, my entire website was stolen, and my name was replaced with some idiot's name, uh, and I'm not too happy about it. So, there you go. Yeah. Don't steal people's websites. We were kidding. Yeah, exactly. Do not steal. Um, but take inspiration, which is where I'm sure. going to go later. <laughs> okay, so the next website is Val Geisler. Um, I love this website because she, I just think it's got a ton of personality and she does a lot of things right. Um, so the first thing she wants you to do is she wants you to uh, get on her email list um, before working with her. That um, shirt she's that wearing is awesome. <laughs> yeah, she's really cool. I've met her. She's a uh, She's as, as fun and eccentric as she appears. Um, so yeah, she has this She has this same, I mean, you're seeing a theme here. Every business owner faces the same problem, increasing conversions and reducing churn. So this is the pain. She's got companies she's worked for, but what I really like is this. Um, and I know a lot of, for a lot of people, this is hard to do. Um, especially if you're doing design, it's really hard to measure design sometimes, especially if you're not on a super duper high traffic, humongous company website where you can do cool A-B tests and stuff like that. Um, but she's lucky because she can actually see that the onboarding email she rewrote saw a 209% increase in conversions, which is awesome. If you can get something like this on your website, put it front and center. Um, so she tells you how she does this. She tells you, you know, what she does. She's got some social proof here, um, dear, this is what she does. I'm just gonna sort of whiz through it a little bit because it's repeating a lot of the same information. Um, again, and like- the design is very pretty too. It is very pretty, yeah. 
I try to get nicely designed ones. So good strategy and good design. It's a rare combination, but it can happen. Um, this is really cool. It's kind of overcoming an objection, the question you didn't ask. And I just love the, she's a copywriter, so she's obviously going to be amazing at copywriting. Um, but I just think this is a really nice sort of section about um, what is a good conversion rate and what should I be aiming for? Um, she tells you what she does. And then look, all the way near the bottom is about her. Again, another theme, the good portfolio websites have you a little bit towards the bottom um, with more testimonials and again, the call to action. Um, so I also wanted to show you an agency website that I thought was pretty good because I know there's some freelancers, there's some agencies around. Um, this was a little bit harder for me to find because I, I collect a lot of freelance websites, but I wasn't collecting them. Uh, the agency ones, but my friend Jennifer runs an agency and I know she's super su uh, super successful and she's got some really nice things on her website um, or her agency's website. What I really like is, so, is this part here where she says, we take a stand against mediocre results, just pretty design and websites that don't work. If I were them, I'd probably make that my headline. Um, because I think that's really good. I think a lot of people, it's overcoming the objections like we talked about earlier. A lot of people have bad or just no results when they do a website redesign project. Um, maybe they hire a designer who only cares about pretty design and they sort of leave out the strategy in favor of making it look good. Um, and they just have websites that just don't really work for them. Um, and I thought that was really good. So she has design that makes a difference. Um, this is pretty pretty standard, you know, what she offers. Small team, big agency experience. I really like that because um, a lot of clients want, and I found when I was freelancing, sometimes I wouldn't get projects because they wanted the agency experience. And that was really hard for me to overcome um, as a remote freelancer. Um, she has featured projects and then just a, a call to action. So that's just a small example of an agency website. And then I just have one more, if that's okay. Yeah, I'm let's see it. Go through it quite quickly because I'm going to go bookmark all these sites. Oh, you don't have to. I have a slide with all of them on. Perfect. <laughs> and some extras as well because I just didn't have time to go through all of them. Um, but this one is Reliable PSD. This is the service I use to get my designs into um, HTML and CSS. I always use them and I pretty much insist that all my clients use them too because they get the most amazing results. And the reason I wanted to show you this is because. Um, these guys have a really difficult job because uh, PSD to HTML is a very commoditized business. Um, there's a lot of people who do it. It's a little bit of a race to the bottom um, and it's it's just hard to get people who are willing to pay a decent amount of money for this. Especially because you can outsource that to all kinds of countries where they'll do it for almost next to nothing. So it's very hard to be, I mean, you're gonna have to stand out from the crowd to to charge a decent rate for sure. Exactly. And I think when I first saw their website um, and I read it, it converted me um, and I had got cheaper quotes elsewhere. Since then, I have tried a cheaper version um, and it was awful. It was really bad. It was not worth um, the money. So I came back to this. Um, but I liked that this website converted me and it hasn't actually changed much since I first started using them, I've been using them for years. Um, so they talk about get beautiful code, service so good that makes you smile. Um, they've actually got three call to actions here, but I think that's fine because when you're in a commoditized, you know, space, you want people to contact you on their terms. Um, so yeah, it's really to... one call to action with a couple different ways to do it. So I think they're cool yeah. on that. Yeah, and it's nice. You can schedule a call, email a question. So however you want to get in touch, it's up to you. So I really like that. They got this social proof here, um, created by an agency for agencies. Um, as a creative agency ourselves. So this is the personal story. They've tried many of the things and they found that it was headaches, frustration and horrible. So they decided to fix that. And that makes me trust them because I'm like, oh, okay, you're an agency yourself. And I looked into their agency and it's a legitimate agency. And I was like, okay, you probably know what you're doing. Crazy high level of code. They have, um, I'm not gonna read it all. I'll give you the link, but you can look at it later. I just think the copy of this is fantastic. And I use this as, inspiration for most things that I do. <laughs> um, we get it right first time. This is, their, this is their unique selling point, which is something I haven't spoken about. Um, so everyone who has a portfolio website 
really needs to find what their unique selling point is. For this company, it's we have a designer who reviews every project that we code, ensuring it matches your original design. They also have two, other, two to three other people that test your website in every browser and device. And I really think this is their USP, that they have an actual designer whose job is to just make sure they've matched it pretty perfectly. Um, for a freelancer, um, your USP could be anything, anything to do with your experience. So for example, for me, uh, if I was to make a portfolio website today, my USP would be um, I have I I run a small software business if you can really call it that it's the WordPress plugin, <laughs> um, and I you know have a it's online more than training. most of us have done so don't belittle yourself like that. <laughs> so it's my Britishness coming through, um, and I have an online training business, and I really really deeply understand that you need strategy and design, and I understand what. Uh, you know, how things like conversion rates work and how funnels work and all this crazy stuff that I didn't understand before I had these businesses. And that would be my USP. And yours could be anything, anything to do with your experience. What is it about you that makes you different, that makes you special? And you need to really find something that you can point to as your USP. Um, so yeah, so this website, it's got social proof, testimonials. This is what they do and then um, a call to action. Also some frequently asked questions are a really good way to overcome objections. So I usually put frequently asked questions at the end, which is basically the overcoming objections section. Good for SEO too. Yes, very good. Well, actually I don't know too much about SEO to be honest. I mean, you just think about the questions people have, if they're frequently asked questions, right? They're probably asking people those questions verbally, and they're probably also putting those questions into Google. So if you can match those two things up and you can answer those questions good, um, plus it's keyword yep. rich, so That's no true. harm in that. Yep. My, my SEO is pretty much just that, just write what people want to know, and it seems to work, but hmm, I haven't done an awful lot of strategy there. <laughs> um, <laughs> Cool. So these are, this is the slide I was telling you about. It's got all the people that we've just talked about and some more, so you don't have to worry about writing it down. Um, so then before I go into the next section, which is talking about how to actually design, um, is there any, are there any questions about the strategy or anything you guys want to ask or contribute or anything before I move into the design part of the talk? <laughs> No, I think uh, as far as I see, you, you've you covered it very well. I think uh, everybody in the comments here was enjoying the uh, the inspiration you gave them on here. So unless Matt's got something, I say we carry on. Yeah, it doesn't seem like there's any uh, any real questions in the, in the comments. So move forward. Very cool. Wow. Good for me. Um, Hashtag nailed it. Yes. <laughs> okay. So now I'm going to talk about the design process. So this is, for me, this is the really fun part. Um, Cause I want to show you a process that I've pretty much nailed down and that I teach that if you can't hire a designer or do anything else, you can use this process to make something look good, even if you're not a designer. So the first thing I want to point out is when you look at this slide, there's one word that crops up a little bit more than others. Can you see which one it is? Content. Correct. Content. I can count. <laughs> awesome. So yeah, content is just the most important thing in a design process, whether you're working for yourself, whether you're working for a client. Um, I really, if you want to be a results-based um, freelancer or agency, you really don't want to skimp on the content because this is really where the results are. The design is good, um, but it's extra. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to, oh, I had another slide for that, is you want to write really good content. And I'm going to show you how because uh, I'm not a writer and I'm sure many of you aren't either. Um, but the good news is that as uh, Joanna Weave, who's like the best person in terms of copywriting, if you want to learn about it, definitely follow her. She says, great copy is the result of curation, not creation. Um, and basically what that means is you want to be using what your clients are already saying about you as your content. So you want to be taking their words and using that to shape your content. And I'm going to give you an example of this. I wasn't sure whether to put this in because it's not awfully relevant to the freelancer, um, but I think it illustrates the point really well. And I'm going to give you some more ideas after that is going to be a bit more relevant to you. So 
when people sign up to my free email course on learning design, um, I asked them an email asking them, what is your biggest frustration with design? Um, in other words, what one thing bugs the hell out of you? And if I had a magic wand and could make it go poof, what would that do for you and the projects that you work on? And what I do is I collate every single reply I get to this and I put it in a spreadsheet. <laughs> and um, I have these headers at the top, which sort of tells me the themes that people are saying, which helps me learn about what I need to be writing about first and foremost. But secondly, um, when I need to write some copy, I can just go through all of this text and really get into my customer's head yeah. and really see what they're struggling with. And I can use that. I can use their words to map out my content. Um, so as you can see on my website, you know, I have a quote, I know good design when I see it. I start every project thinking this is going to look so slick and awesome. And the results are just completely underwhelming. Um, and this is pretty much taken directly from what people are saying to me. Um, so I don't necessarily have to be a really good writer because other people are the best writers when they're not thinking that they have to write, if that makes sense. Yeah. When you're thinking, I have to write some amazing copy. It's probably going to sound really pants. But when you're not thinking and you're just writing what you actually think, which is what people who answer this question are doing, if I'd have told them, oh, I want a new headline for my website, I probably wouldn't get these really good answers. Um, so some ways that... So I really encourage you to try to use what your clients are saying about you. Um, and some ways that you can do this are um, interviews. So if you have really good relationships with any of your past clients, just set up a time, see if they're willing to just talk to you about why they hired you, um, what they were hoping to get out of the project, what their pro problems were or are, um, their results. Just have a conversation. Um, you can have some basic questions written down but just make sure it's a conversation. Um, record it, obviously ask them that if you can record it. Go to rev.com, transcribe it, super cheap. Um, and then just sit in an armchair with a cup of tea or coffee and just highlight things that they're saying. Um, you can also do this with surveys. So this is really good if you have a contact form on your website. So say if you're saying schedule a free consultation. In that, this is something I learned from Joanna Weeb again. Um, when they schedule a free consultation, in that thank you page, embed a little type form survey or something and say, um, I'm completely stealing this from Joanna, by the way. This is her words. Um, what was stealing's going on? great around here. Huh? Sorry. I said stealing's great around here. I'm just still <laughs> yeah. a little pissed. Stealing with attribution. Oh, so okay. Like that. <laughs> um, she, so she says, uh, what was going on in your life today that made you reach out or something like that? Um, and she says she gets a fantastic result with this. And she does it in every single project that she does. Um, and so I would really recommend you doing the same. So for me, I have the email that goes out. But for you, I would say on your thank you page, embed a little survey and start putting into the spreadsheet what people are saying. And that is going to be an absolute goldmine of information. Um, the third thing that you can do is when they do have an initial consultation, Again, make, ask if you can record the call. You probably are anyway. Um, transcribe it and just go through it. See if there's anything you can pick out. Um, your, you know, your consultation call. You don't really want to be framing for you to get information out of it. It's just you want to frame it, you know, as you would be anyway. But sometimes clients will say something that really resonate. Um, you can mine support emails. So when clients write in, maybe there's something there about what they're struggling with. Um, or if there's anywhere, this is probably only relevant for agencies, if there's anywhere the online reviews are left, um, say on Google or something, you can have a look at those. Um, but really the first two or maybe three. Are it, it, it's funny you mentioned the mining support email. So I have a couple, uh, I have quite a few customers on care plans. And over the last week, I've had two of them write me asking for work to be done. And they ended the conversation with, I don't know if this is included or not. And I thought, well, obviously, I'm not doing a good job of communicating what's included and what's not. And I'm like, I got to put together some content about that. So that's, a, I mean, it's great to like really listen to those emails you're getting. Yeah, it's perfect. I am. Um, so I have a, a VA now because um, my inbox was getting a bit overwhelming. But one thing I make sure she does is anytime people write in with questions about Client Portal, I get her to collate that. And so I need to do a big update on the website and I can, because people are asking the same questions over and over again. And again, it's like, I'm clearly not, I thought this was, I thought I communicated this, but I'm clearly not communicating this. 
Um, so yeah, it's super useful to do that. Um, cool. So the first step in your design process is to open up Google Docs or any word processor. I prefer Google Docs and just write. Um, so this is sort of a rough outline that you can use. You don't have to follow it, but I wanted to give you something that if you're trying to write your first page of a portfolio website that you can follow. Um, so if you're really stuck, um, maybe just try to follow this outline. You can change it. It's not definitive. It's not you know 100% going to work, but it's a starting point. Um, so you want to have an introduction, introduce your service, or maybe the pain that you're solving. Talk a little bit about who it's for and who it's not for. So you want to qualify the right people, or the right people on your website. Um, what will, I've kind of worded this a bit wrong, what will your client get out of this? Um, so this is where your client will be after you work together. This is the dream. Um, a little bit about what's included, so the nitty gritty of what specifically you offer. Who's behind this? Show that you're human, maybe tell a bit of your personal story, include your picture, have a call to action, maybe put some frequently asked questions below with you know, overcoming objections, um, and then a secondary call to action. Um, so you just wanna open up your Google Doc and just try and write. And obviously testimonials should be scattered absolutely everywhere. Um, and one thing I actually wanted to mention is test I, um, I've tested this, but I have small traffic, so it's not, it's just a qualitative, is that the right word, testing process. Um, I found that having testimonials stacked, maybe one underneath each other, works better than in one of those slider things. <laughs> um, so don't hide your testimonials, have them underneath each other um, so people can see all of them. It works. It for me, it's ten. It works a lot better. I wanted to tell you what, but while you're in between slides here, um, you're getting a lot of applause in the group here. So uh, I wanted to give you encouragement. Everybody's uh, everybody's going on and on about how much they're getting out of this. So continue on. That's awesome because when you do these kinds of things, you're thinking, I as soon as I end, I'm either going to get people saying they're enjoying it, or people are just going to be hating on it. No, so you're killing actually, it right now. So keep it going. I can breathe. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, so the point that I really want to get across here is that if your portfolio website works as a Google Doc, you are absolutely doing it right. That is what you that is what you need to be aspiring to achieve. Um, and I'm going to give you a little bit of an example about this. So um, there's an article on Growth Lab, um, Benji Hyam, I believe. Um, he had a product business, and it wasn't really doing awfully well. So people kept emailing saying, I want a done for you service. And he didn't really want to do a services business, um, but this seemed to be what people wanted. So his business partner said, listen, hear me out. What if we just create a simple landing page describing a content marketing service and see if people would buy it? Price would have to be high enough so it would be worth it, but you know, it would solve both our problems. You would have income and I can start focusing more time on Grow and Convert. So that's exactly what they did. Um, they created a Google Doc and they talked about you know, this done for you version of their product and they sold their first two deals, I think ridiculously quickly at $6,000 each. Um, so they made $12,000 with something that was created in a Google doc. They didn't even make a website out of this. It was just a Google doc. Um, that's and that's incredible. really, yeah, it's amazing. And, but that's really where you wanna be. So once you've written your content, you don't wanna necessarily jump straight into the design. Um, see if it works you don't have to do what they do and actually use it as a live website but at least show it to some people and make sure they they get it um just as it is in the google doc um and if if that happens then you are definitely 100 percent on the right track so really recommend doing that um and then obviously later on they figured okay this works so we're going to make it into a website and you can see if you look at their website um the link is on one of these slides um, they've pretty much used the exact same content. So it sort of informed the design, which is what we're going to talk about now. So the next step in the design process is to format your content. And this is what we saw in that Grow and Convert example. So Google Docs has formatting already in there. It's got titles, subtitle, heading one, blah, 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 bold, italic. It's got numbers, bullets, indentation. Um, definitely take advantage of this because this is going to really help you when you're designing and when you're trying to make things look good. Um, so once you've written your content, format it and make sure it's readable. So this is just the landing page for my course. Um, 
you want to be able to see all these different formatting things that you've got going on. So bullet points, headings, and all this stuff. And what's that, what that's going to do is when you're designing, it's really hard to just have a blank screen and think, OK, I need to design this. Um, you'll end up looking at websites for inspiration, and you won't you know, you won't really know how to translate it. So when you've been formatting your Google Doc, you'll have a better idea of what you need to be looking for when you're looking for inspiration. So for example, you can see on the left-hand side, I've got what you'll learn, and then I've got heading, subheading, heading, subheading in these bullet points. Now I can look at other websites and say, oh, look, I can use this kind of pattern. So see, it's got an icon, it's got a heading, subheading, um, and so on. Or I can say, I could do it like this, it's the same thing. It's got heading, subheading, heading, subheading, um, and it's got maybe an illustration or an image next to it, and it's going down the page. Or maybe I could do it like this. So again, heading, subheading, heading, subheading, but with just one image on the right-hand side. Um, so formatting your content isn't just to, it's not just a waste of time. It's really gonna help you when you're looking for inspiration when you're trying to design um, your product. Um, and it's a lot easier to design the thing on the right that you see now than it is to design the thing on the left. Designing that those paragraphs of text is really hard. There's not an awful lot you can do with that. There's a lot you can do with the one on the right. So you're making design decisions in Google Docs, which is really cool. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm blown <laughs> away here. <laughs> it works really well. <laughs> so this kind of leads me on to the collecting inspiration part, which is you know what we just talked about. When you're collecting inspiration, don't just say, oh, I like Nike's website or I like Stripe's website. Um, I, I want it to look like that, because then you're going to be in the realm of, of copying. You actually have something that you can look for when you're looking for inspiration. So for example, on my landing page, I have a heading here. So heading, subheading, into your email. Um, I can find this content block. Look, it's got a heading, subheading. And then that email opt-in form is actually from a different website entirely. Um, again, I have this little subheading section. I can use this content block. Um, this part at the end, oh, I like these avatars on this website. That would be cool because I'm seeing how many developers have started learning design. I can use that. Um, and what you'll do is you'll just be, instead of just screenshotting an entire website and saying, I like this, you screenshot little bits of different people's websites and then you just kind of paste it together and you're really building up a layout. Um, and you, you, know, you can do this with any, you can create, this is on the left is a, it, I think it's Landbook or something, and you can just screenshot and have a play around with different layouts that you like. Um, and these are some websites that you can go to look for inspiration for portfolio websites. Um, well, actually two of them are portfolio websites, the creative portfolios and best folios. What I would say about this is the portfolio website inspiration pages look really good. They all look amazing, that's why they're on there. However, they're not necessarily the best in terms of content and strategy. Mm. So I also put landing page um, inspiration on there as well, because I think if you really want a high converting land, um, portfolio website, you should be looking at landing pages. So take design inspiration from the portfolio websites, but maybe not so much the content. Um, so the next thing we're going to do in our design process, now we've got some inspiration for our content blocks and built up a layout, is we're just going to overlay our content. So again, I'm going to show you this is what I did for my course. Um, it's not live now, it's been redesigned. Um, so you can see I'm sort of overlaying it, and then it kind of ends up looking like this. So I'm using my fonts, my colors, um, and I've taken inspiration from three different websites in this one thing. So it's not like I'm copying this website. Um, I'm just taking inspiration from it. Um, and it's just a really, it's just a really easy way to get you from nothing to something that you can actually work with, um, which is really the last point that I want to make because you might end up with something that looks like this. Um, and I think this looks pretty decent. You know, it's clean. It's nice. There's a few issues that I'd want to tweak. Um, but you also might end up looking with something like this. Um, but that's that's fine. <laughs> In fact, it's it's probably quite likely that you're going to end up with something. It's not going to be this like magic wand that you're going to do this process that I've just told you, and it's just going to magically look like the best website in the entire world. There's probably going to be some issues, um, but that's fine because you can't design nothing. You can only design something. So now you've got something on the page. You can actually go 
and go back and tweak it and start looking at things like, um, so if I go back to this website, you can say, okay, I'm gonna get my website up in, in the browser and then I'm gonna get a website that I really like in the, in the one next to it. What is it that's different about the one I like versus mine? And you might say, okay, um, I think I don't like the font in mine and they've got a really nice font. So you can either look at the font they've used and maybe use the same one if it makes sense. Um, or you can maybe Google best fonts for best Google web fonts or something or how to choose a font. And you can start, once you know what the problem is, you can then start to research how to fix that problem. And that's gonna be so much easier than just being like how to design because that's like a huge subject. Um, and then you just slowly iterate and just tweak and tweak and tweak because this is really where the magic happens. And this is where the design is gonna start to happen. Um, and the last thing I really want to mention is that as a business owner, you really do already have the qualities needed to create great looking designs. Um, I know design is hard because it's not like when you're testing something and you can see, does it work? Yes. No. You know, it's not, it's, it's not as easy as that with a design. Sometimes you're like, does it look good? Uh, I think it kind of looks good, but there's not really a right and wrong answer. Um, but as a business owner, you already have the qualities that you need to do this because you're already a problem solver. Um, you do a lot of these things day to day, whether you're a copywriter, developer, you know, maybe you're, you debug your software or something like that. You already know how to identify problem areas and fix them. You just need to be able to apply that to design. So <laughs> end on a little bit of inspiration um, because really this is the real design process. Um, stand back, identify the problem areas, fix them and repeat. You can't do that with nothing. So just use the process that I've given you to get something and then you're you're halfway there. I will say we have kind of a reoccurring theme here. So last week we had uh, Neville on the show who does copywriting. And uh, you know one thing he said in that show is you don't wanna just open up a blank Google doc and then just start writing. Like it's gonna be very difficult to write content just starting with this blank document when you're working on copywriting. So he said, you know, you have to, uh, curate information, look for inspiration, you know, see what people are searching for, grab all these different headline ideas. You need some kind of formula to, you know, to write your content in, you know, like the formula you gave earlier, um, you know, but once you have those things, well, now it's not so hard because now you just got to find these little pieces and then you swish them together and now you have content, you yeah. know, and you're kind of saying the same thing with the design process. You don't just start with a blank screen and say, I'm going to design a website. You have all these different pieces of content. You have these different things you've pulled in for inspiration and you start putting all this stuff together and it's a it's a process that you use it's not just uh you know i have some kind of god-given talent where i can just start filling out the screen and it's going to look beautiful you know yeah. and that's I what should. makes it where anybody can do this like you can absolutely go do this yeah i should have my own quote like joanna does where i say design is not um what, what did she say design is more curation not uh creation sure <laughs> Mm -hmm. You can apply it to anything. It's yeah, it's it's complete. And, and that last slide you had, <clears throat> that's something I will do on almost every website I build is I will go through that page and you know, we kind of divide websites and sections, you know, you'll have a row that looks different or something. So when I get done with the page, I'll look at it and I'll say, what is the weakest section on this page? And I'll go back and tweak that one until it's no longer the weakest section. And then I'll come back and look again. Okay, well, which one now is the weakest one? Uh, yeah. You know, and kind of using that process to go through and you end up building them all up. So I, I love yeah. that right there. That's great. Yeah, I think it's really important because what happens, what I see over and over again is people, when they're not confident with something, whether it's design or whatever, they'll try it and then it won't work right the first time. And then they'll just freeze up and say, nope, I can't do this. Nope. I, I tried it and it didn't work. I cannot do this. Um, and so I think it's really important to not expect it to look good the first time. It, just don't expect anything to turn out like you want it the first time. Um, the more experience you have, the closer you're going to get to it being perfect. But it's almost never going to be perfect at the same time. So, uh, yeah, the first time. So, cool. So, um, I'm going to talk a little bit. As you know, I have a course that's open now. Um, I really don't like pitching stuff because it feels weird and icky. Because you're British. <laughs> yeah. Um, but what I want to what I want to um, really say is, my course is going to be really good for teaching you, you know, everything, all the everything that you need 
to debugger design, so color, typography. We go into the fundamentals of design. Um, but what I want to point out is that everything I've taught you today um, is really the majority of what you need. Um, so if you want to learn design, you can just do it with what I've taught you today. But if you want a bit more of a fast track, you know, um, I do have a course. Um, it's got currently it's got 30 in-depth videos, but we're adding more all the time, lifetime access updates, blah, blah, blah. Um, and obviously, as you know, your listeners to the admin bar, you can get 20% off just with the code admin bar, nice and simple. Um, so I actually have, this is the first time I've launched it with two um, tiers, and I'm really excited about this. So I have the starter and advanced, and you get 20% off either one you choose. Um, but I want to talk about the advanced. So the starter includes all the videos, all the cheat sheets, everything like that. The advanced one includes, um, we're working on a bunch of illustrations and UI components and icons and all that stuff, which aren't ready yet, but will be in the next couple of months. Um, so you get all that. But what the other thing you get, which I'm really excited about, which I've been testing with past students since January, is a live version of the course. So um, we're starting a version where you can go through, you can have access to all the videos, but you can go through the course with me. And every week we jump on a group call and I'll critique your work. So. Um, week one, we might be doing layout. Week two, we'll look at color. Week three, we'll look at typography. And I'll get you to um, submit your work into me. Um, I will then collate them. We'll jump on a call, and I'll get your work up, and I'll critique it um, on a live call. And people have been finding that ridiculously useful because sometimes you can't necessarily see easily where the problem areas are. Um, but because I've been doing it for so long, I can I can sort of point you in the right direction. Um, so it's the live version is it's eight weeks long, six weeks training with two catch up weeks. So when life happens, there's two weeks included where you can just catch up or just rest or something. Um, and at the end, if you if you submit all your work, you get a little certification, a little bit. It's uh, yeah, a little bit quirky. So you can put it on your website resume or whatever. Um, and another thing that I wanted to add, and this is um, so this is my. Um, next course, well, one of my next courses that is coming this year, um, I'm actually doing a whole course on designing a portfolio website. Um, so from, you know, resumes, case studies, which are really important on portfolio websites, bringing your personality into it and what employers and clients look for in a portfolio website. Um, and I'm working on this now, um, but this is going to give me an extra kick to get this done because I need the extra kick. Um, you can have it for free if you um, enroll in my course now. Um, because I really need a kick to get it done. And the good thing about this as well is, um, full disclosure, I love getting feedback from people who have the course as I'm creating it. Um, it just helps me make a better course. Um, you don't have to give me your feedback, but if you would like to get access to the lessons early, you can, just in exchange for a little bit of feedback. Um, so that's it. I don't know how to pick the winner because we're on Facebook Live. Mm. Um, so we can... Um, do this after right. maybe email, or we can just pick someone. Let's let's do it here. Let's make it fun. They have to be here for it, right? So I don't want to send out an email later and say you won, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So here's my thought. You, this is off the top of my head, so y'all jump in. I could read a couple of these comments we had here without telling you who they are, and then you're going to pick your favorite comment, Laura, and we'll give that person uh, okay. the prize. Yeah, that's a great idea. Okay. So let's go. I'll, I'll pick one. You pick one, Matt. Uh, we'll both pick... Let's say three, right? We'll just okay. go back and forth. You following me? Am I making sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to go with, uh, let's see, a simple but good one. This has been amazing. Nice. Love it. I better write these down, right? <laughs> right. So we got just to remember who said them. All right, Matt, why don't you find one? All right, how about there are so many gems in here. Thank you for sharing your magic. I use Evernote to keep track of inspiration, headings, sections, fonts, layouts, etc. All right. Make sure you mark who that is, Matt, because yep. I can uh, I can't follow you. We're both just going to do two cuz we're going to get lost. I've already decided my <laughs> idea was very uh very not thought through. Um let's see here. Makes it fun. Yeah, I know. I, I, I rarely know what I'm doing. So if y'all haven't caught on to that. Um, this is probably more fair as well. Because last time I, I think I picked um, someone who had the same name as my dog and I love my dog. So I was like, <laughs> oh, I've got to pick that one. <laughs> All right. So the next one is the hits just keep coming. Such great, useful materials. 
That's a good one. Stroking my ego here. All right. Uh, how about these are some of the best lives on Facebook, in my honest opinion. When you find yourself uh, wait, wanting to hang out with these folks, you know that this shit is real. Nice job, Matt, Kyle, and Laura. Okay. Right. Okay. So we have those those four. Okay. Do we I think I know? Okay, you know. Let's do it. I know the one that made me go. Oh, that's so cool. It's got to be the last one. The one Matt just read. Yes. The very last one. All right. Well, that is uh, yeah. that's Beth. Congratulations, cool. Beth, if you're still nice. here. And you get the you get the advanced version as well. So not just the starter one. Nice. Oh, wow. Five tools if you want. Um, but yeah, that was cool because we were just talking about how I, I think that the sort of admin bar community is a really good uh, community. So I'm glad that she sort of touched on that. So Yeah, that's awesome. That's why I picked that one. Beth, if you're still around, come on, drop us a comment. She might have left on us, so they got to still be here. We're, oh, no. Let's not make it more confusing, right? It's okay. We'll We'll say she was here long enough. Okay, she's super oh, active in the group. I take it away. <laughs> yeah, she's super active in the group, and she's awesome. So that's, oh, there she, she just is. commented, she's, she's here. here. Okay, congratulations, okay. Beth. Woohoo! Cool. Well, I will just uh, I'll figure out how to get your email address afterwards, or um, something. I'll connect y'all. Yeah. Here. Okay. Cool. Sounds good. Okay, so yeah, we have time for questions. This is the link if you're interested in the course. Um, otherwise, the pitch is over, don't worry. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions about design, strategy, course, whatever. Yeah, so we we uh, we ran fairly late on this show, so we'll give it a couple minutes here. Uh, if anybody has some questions, let's get through those. Otherwise, we will wrap it up. Cool, nice and easy. Yep. Everybody's congratulating Beth. <laughs> you know, you, you covered so much. Uh, I didn't really see any questions as we went. Did you, Matt? No, I mean, pretty much any time one was uh, like potentially brought up, you uh, you answered it in the next like the next <laughs> sentence. It's like you've done this before. Yeah, yeah, go figure. Well, this is the first time I've I've really done like this one, but I'm I'm happy with it. I've been working on it for a while actually, because yeah. Here, here we got one question. Any payment plan for the advanced version? Do you have any payment plan options? Um, unfortunately, I don't because, um, well, frankly, I, I don't really know how to make it work. Um, <laughs> the the problem Just is... Just send cash in an envelope. You'll yeah. Be good. Well, the problem is, is because the, you get access to everything um, right away. And I spoke to other people who have payment plans um, and they get a lot of... Uh, definitely not accusing anyone of anything, but it's it's just difficult because you kind yeah. of become a bit of a debt collector sometimes. And I can't find a way. I've looked into it because I want to be able to offer payment plans, but I just haven't found a way to logistically make it work. Um, and I don't even know how to technically make it work right now. Um, so unfortunately not. I'm sorry. That's okay. I, yeah. I, I know what you're saying, though, because it is helpful to have those payment plans uh, because that makes it easier on us to be able to buy stuff. But at the same time, they go in, run your whole course and be out of there in 30 days. And uh, and that's yeah. not helpful to you. You can't keep doing this. These awesome uh, bits of content if you don't get paid for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll try and figure something out in the future, I think. But uh, I just don't know. I've thought about it a lot, to be honest. All right. Well, I'm not seeing any other questions here. I will. I will add to this that uh, I think this is a a fantastic episode you are a wealth of knowledge um bringing you on to kind of talk to everybody in this group about this is super helpful i can guarantee this is going to be one of our uh, our most viewed episodes for sure uh laura is part of the group so if you do come up with questions later uh, uh tag her in the group and we'll uh, we'll hound her to come back um and, and answer those questions. And we'll also stay on top of uh, the course coming later this year to make sure uh, we put some added pressure on you. Uh, so when that course comes out, uh, we'll have you back on the show. Cool. Thank you so much. I can't wait. Awesome. Matt, do you have anything to add before I close us out here? No, I think uh, I think you put it well. Okay, you can go to theadminbar.com forward slash Laura and get to her course very easily. Don't forget, she has a coupon code adminbar so you can get 20% off. Oh, we did get a question. What is Laura's favorite color? And he spelt favorite really weird with a U in there. I don't know what's going on with that. What a weirdo. Oh, Brit. <laughs> and I get color. so many people emailing me saying, hey, you've got a typo in your emails. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't. <laughs> um, oh, my favorite color. Gosh, it changes a lot. Um, hmm. It always used to be green. I'm kind of going off green now. Mm. I'd say like a kind of like a rose, 
dark rose pinky kind of color. Oh, like the color that at the question time. I love that color. There you go. Nice. Hmm. What's what's yours? Else? I go with uh, with orange for me. Ah, okay, nice. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> All right, guys. So uh, just a reminder to the, that if this group helps you in any way, the easiest way to help us is to share the content, subscribe to our channel and use our affiliate links. It's free. It takes little time and it greatly helps support the show. Uh, that's all for now. And we will catch y'all inside the group. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. You'd think we'd know what the hell we were doing. Gives me time to finish my tea. It's all there good. There you go.